what, why why more the focus on this uh, uh, this particular section as opposed to the sections that were actually stolen by eminent domain or at least seized exactly. by eminent domain? Exactly. It's the one piece of ground that we could actually stop. ShireSociety.com So I haven't really done anything yet that might at least theoretically support the human rights of the folks who are demonstrating at the uh, North Dakota Pipeline. But uh, I'm visiting Colorado Springs for the holidays, so it's kind of a chance to, uh, there's, there's this event in Colorado Springs supporting the, the protesters. And one of the things that tactically I like about this and the other demonstrations like it is that you don't want to have all your demonstrations. You don't want to have all your demonstrations at the site of the grievance, not at one place. Uh, there's a lot of science behind this concept that you don't do Tiananmen Square, right? You do better if you decentralize opposition to something. Now, being New Hampshire focused, I haven't really paid that much attention to what's going on out there. But I do know that parts of the pipeline do, uh, they were seized through eminent domain. Or at least I read they were in a mainstream libertarian publication. But uh, yeah, and it does make me wonder why focus on uh, the area that I guess was not seized by eminent domain. But at least they're protesting something. How are you? Uh, I guess the first question would be, what, what's the purpose behind the protest? What's your main objective? The purpose behind this protest here in Colorado Springs is to help back the Sioux Nation at Standing Rock to fight the Dakota Pipeline for the whole country and the, our water supply, to protect our water supply and to stop the Dakota Pipeline right in its tracks. Um, so we're here to educate um, people who might not be aware, because if they're only in focus with mainstream media, some people don't actually know what's happening. Right. So we're down here before the parade uh, to help. This is a Christmas parade? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now, so did you have any street clothes yourself? or? No. Okay. Okay. No, we're just... We're down here thinking that this would be a good time because there's a lot of people from the springs that come to the parade of lights and a lot of them might not even know what's going on with the Dakota pipeline. I'm going to squeeze a little closer but it's okay because it's so loud. Okay. Now one question I have is that my understanding is that, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the, the pipeline, this, the, the, pipe, the, the section that is in controversy right now is on private property with the consent of the private property owner. Is that correct? Well, okay. It's the Army Corps of Engineers property, but it is on treaty land from the 1851 treaty with the N. Uh, into the 60s, the treaty that was signed with the Sioux Nation. So it is still their treaty land. Okay. Okay. Um, the reservation has been moved a little farther uh, away from the line, but they still have many of their ancestors are buried there. Um, the Dakota Pipeline, the, they just plowed through there even though they had uh, lots of orders to halt so they could verify whether or not uh, there was actually ancestral burial grounds there or not, but they okay. just went ahead and went anyway. So, no, and the, and the water itself belongs to everybody. And it's not only going underneath the Mississippi, but or the Missouri, but it's going under the Mississippi. Now, you know what happens to things that belong to everybody. Well, tragedy of the commons. Yeah. But what, what, why, why more the focus on this uh, uh, this particular section as opposed to the sections that were actually stolen by eminent domain or at least seized exactly. by eminent domain? Exactly. With the farmers losing all their lands and and what didn't you know the farmers that didn't lose them still had a lot of damage done by the pipeline destroying their fields. Yes. No. 
what the, the thing is here is it's the one piece of ground that we could actually stop and say, well, wait, you yeah. can't go here uh -huh. because of the treaties. Okay. And uh, so it actually worked to our benefit in a way. Right. Yeah, up there. Stellar yeah. answers. I, yeah. I'm kind of focused on New Hampshire. I'm a New Hampshire resident. I was just visiting, and I just haven't paid much attention to anything outside New Hampshire because yeah. that's where the real fight seems to be getting won. But this one is getting, starting to get my yes. attention. Yeah. Yes, and um, we gained tremendous ground. There's like right now, um, there's supposed to be almost 3,000 vets, you know, uh, veterans of the um, different, you know, Iraq War, Vietnam War. There's almost 3,000 of them going to camp right now. And, yeah. and right now, there's I think and I think they're saying right now there's more than 8,000 people in camp right now up there fighting. We've had several of our members. I just got back from there a couple weeks ago. We have several of our members in this group that have gone a couple times to help, and there we're still making supply runs back and forth. I forgot to ask your name. My, my name's Lisa. Okay. You know, so you don't have to give your last name. Yeah, my name's. I think ideas are more important than yes, individuals yes, in some ways. Yes. Although individuals are pretty important. Yeah. And okay. You know, it's a good group of people that have gotten together, and uh, so like I said, we're hoping to be able to. The old world is collapsing, and it's going to take its slave driver governments with it. But what will rise up in their place? In New Hampshire, the Shire Society has a plan and a history of action. He didn't take long to come up with a plan. You can sign up right now at ShireSociety.com.